fun. Hello, Coach. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. For everybody, nice. this is Coach Javiela from Gracie Bala Vegas. I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. Very nice to see you and talk to you today. Thank you. How's uh, Las Vegas these days? Hot. Very hot. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, but man, it's a hard time, you know. Mm. Uh, last week I went to a strip and man, all empty, so it's so hard to see. But yeah, I think you are going the way that you can um, restart everything and then we'll be fine. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, if you don't mind, you know, if you could just go ahead and, you know, and kind of introduce yourself and then we'll kind of get right into it. Yeah, sure. So I'm Rafaela Schmidt. Uh, I'm from Brazil. I started my jiu-jitsu journey in Curitiba, that is sitting south of Brazil. I'm not from Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I started jiu-jitsu. Um, oh, man, it's a little bit hard. I was working so hard and I was so stressed out and I had a couple uh, health issues and then my doctor said, uh, all right, it's time to stop a little bit. Uh, you have to do some uh, exercise, something like that. Um, I had a blood clot, so I couldn't mm -hmm. see like for three days. And then I was like, oh yeah, I have to take care with myself. And then one guy that worked with me at that time, he was a jujitsu professor. Okay. And then he was like, oh, let's do it. And I was like, no, it's not for me. No, 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 no. And then I just gave a try. And since the first time that I put my gear on, I just fell in love. And I started doing jiu-jitsu like a, just for fun. And then I started to help my professor with kids class. And then I started to do tournaments. And then I'm here <laughs> <laughs> working and living jiu-jitsu <laughs> all day. That's, that's yeah. really, really awesome. So how long have you been training now? Um, about seven years. Seven years, okay. Yeah, six, seven years. Yeah. And you're so, uh, brown belt now, right? Yeah, I'm brown belt. Mm -hmm. So my first year doing jiu-jitsu, I was number one of the rank in Brazil. Okay. So I was working a lot and training a lot. Mm -hmm. And then my professor, my, my jiu-jitsu professor, he said, maybe you can like train a little bit more and do more tournaments. And then I was like, okay, why not? And then, <laughs> I, and then I went, the next year, I went Brazilian champion, European champion. Oh. I got a third place in Abu Dhabi. I got a third place in Pan Ams. So yeah, I just fell in love with Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. That's really awesome. That's really <laughs> awesome. So, you, yeah. you know, I, I want to jump right into, you know, I'm so thankful that, you know, that you're the first, you know, female that I'm actually interviewing for this. And I hear so much from, you know, women that are students and women who are kind of interested about training. So, you know, what do you tell women? Because I'm sure you get this too, where some women are a little bit hesitant to train, especially since you're living proof that women can do. You know, what do you tell women who are a little bit hesitant? Man, I think uh, it's not, not because I am Grace Barra, but I really believe that Gracie Barra is the best school for a woman to start jiu-jitsu. Because, first of all, we have Barra Fed. Yeah. So, uh, sometimes, I totally understand. When I started jiu-jitsu, I was the only girl at my school. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I was just scared. I was like, oh my God, what I have to do? Uh, what I have to walk? What I have? It's, it's so hard. So... Mm -hmm. I think the Gracie Barra really uh, help us on this way because the environment and the coaches, the professors, they are so helpful. So it's mm -hmm. really good place to start jujitsu. But I think first of all, um, we have just to, to give a try, you know, because sometimes if you go to the school and you just watch a jujitsu class, you are like, you, as a girl, you are like, uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just rolling around with a lot of guys bigger than me, stronger than me. Because when you see jujitsu for the first time, it's hard to understand the technique. Yeah. All that you can see is just two guys like rolling, rolling around. It's hard to understand. I remember, I remember when I started, I was like, okay, who is winning? What is he doing? <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. So 
since you start, uh, since you understand the philosophy of jiu-jitsu, and then you can see that jiu-jitsu is a perfect martial art for girls. In my opinion, it's the only martial art that, um, 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 how can I put in good words? Like, you can beat somebody stronger than you. Because yeah. I did Muay Thai, I did kickboxing, I did a lot of martial arts. Uh, I, in Brazil, that's a funny story. In Brazil, I used to train with Chris Cyborg. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, when I was doing like uh, Muay Thai, man, it was so hard because if somebody punch you in the face, if somebody kick you in the face, it's just knocked down. It's just like you, don't, you have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. So in jiu-jitsu, you can learn how to defend yourself, how to use your technique. Uh, okay, if somebody like is taller than you, you have a good technique for that. If somebody is bigger than you, you have another technique. So you can adapt the game uh, for your board type. Mm -hmm. So that's why for me, jiu-jitsu is the best martial art uh, for a girl. Give it a try. It's, it, it's have been changing my life in all ways. So I really re recommend when I saw every time that I see uh, one girl walking in my school, I was like, come on, come on, <laughs> let me explain some things here. <laughs> That's so cool. I, I, you know, I talk to different students all the time and I'll talk to their spouses, you know, and I'm like, hey, you know, when are you going to join? And they're like, I don't know. You know, it seems like exactly what's the, the, it's so much rolling. And I'm like, no, it, and you know, it's, it's so cool to have that power knowing that if you're smaller you know that you can still beat sure. big people up yeah it's so yeah you are you're totally right so um the funny thing is during this quarantine mm -hmm. uh i have a lot of girls join us for the virtual classes doing like solo drills mm -hmm. like wives and girlfriends and sisters of my students mm -hmm. and like they are just, oh, this is so cool. Why didn't I try before? I was like, yeah, I told you. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you see like a jujitsu class, it's hard for a girl. All that you see is just like a lot of guys rolling, rolling around. Mm -hmm. So since you start like the philosophy of jujitsu, uh, you can see how good jujitsu can, can be like for, for girls, for women. Doesn't matter the age. That's the, the funniest thing. Doesn't matter the age. I have female students, uh, 60, 70 years old, and they're doing very good. They're doing very good at techniques. So that's why I just love jiu-jitsu. You can adapt it for your body type, for your age, for your conditioning, um, and then you still can beat somebody stronger than you or bigger than you. Absolutely. Now, another thing is, too, and obviously it does happen at other schools. I haven't seen it at Gracie Ball so much, but I myself have been guilty of this with Professor Fabiana in San Antonio where guys will have the mentality of like, oh, it's a, it's a girl. Like I'll be like Professor Fabiana for a perfect example. When I went to San Antonio, I saw Professor Fabiana and obviously she's a lot smaller in, in everything compared to me. And I was like, and I was just a blue belt. I think I was just barely a blue belt. I was like, ah, I was like, maybe I could keep up with this black belt. <laughs> no, I no. got <laughs> massacred by Professor Fabiana every time we engaged. And I was like, my God. <laughs> So I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure you've probably heard stories about that, you know, and there's, and that obviously does affect mentally for a lot of women. They're like, I'm not sure I'm going to come back. So when you ever, if you ever get those conversations or those, you know, those remarks or your shit has come to you, what do you tell them then? Yeah, uh, man, that's a hard point because my whole jujitsu journey, um, I hear stuff like that. So, oh, uh, let me roll with you. I need to warm up. Or, uh, let me roll with you. Uh, I need to test some techniques. Uh, it's easy on you. Mm -hmm. And then I just grab this. Okay, okay, let's go. Let's go. So as a girl, uh, sometimes you hear some stuff like, uh, it's not so nice. Uh, and unfortunately, it's still like that. So I have a lot of students when they all came to my school and was like, okay, but you're going to teach the class? Mm, I'm not sure if I want to do this. So for the first time uh, with male students, so sometimes I have to do like a, a first role, you know? Okay, yeah. let me show you a couple techniques. <laughs> yeah. Let me show how, how I'm going to teach my class. 
and then they start to understand, okay, that works, that works. So now for my Mayo students, all of them respect me a lot, a yeah. lot. Because we are always talking, always explain uh, how jiu-jitsu works. And from our female students, uh, I always explain, okay, don't worry. In the beginning, probably uh, will be a little bit hard. We're going to hear something not so nice. But just keep training. Keep training. Since you got the techniques, you're going to do like a very good job. And then nobody can tell nothing about you. So... I always recommend for my students, just keep training. Uh, no worries about it. It's normal. Uh, it's, it, it's sad because it's not only in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Uh, in like uh, big companies, it's always like that. If there is a man doing the job, everybody will be, okay, that's good. Very good job. If it's a woman, everybody will be, mm, maybe. I'm not sure if she's so right. Yeah. So it still happens in the world. So it's exactly the same thing in jiu-jitsu. So I just explained for my, ju for my female students, mm -hmm. okay, it's the word. It's not only in jiu-jitsu. So how you act normally when somebody like that uh, happens on your regular day? And she was like, oh, normally I just, I just don't care. I just keep going. I just keep doing it. And I was like, oh, all right. Exactly the same in jiu-jitsu. If somebody tells you something that you just don't like it, just keep training, keep improving your jiu-jitsu, focus on improving your jiu-jitsu, improving your technique, improving yourself, and then we're going to show. You don't have to answer this kind of thing, you know? You can just show them. Okay. While okay. you are... Sorry? No, so what I notice the most is, like, typically this happens with, like, brand new people. This ain't something that happens for people who's been around. You know, a lot of those people who... It doesn't matter which academy or which martial art or which job, those people usually get weeded out quickly. Uh -huh. But, you know, um, sometimes where I have students, you know, like, hey, this person made his remark. And then, you know, I'm sure you've had to do this myself as a coach. You know, I have to sit down with the guy. I'm like, hey, you know, very respectfully, I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on? And then that's why I explained, you know, the whole Gracie Boz. I wear one big team. And that's why we wear the mm -hmm. same, you know, the same uniform because we're all the same. It doesn't matter, you know, what your hair looks like, you know, or what sex you are doesn't matter we're all the same team we're all trying to better yourself so it's 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 definitely something that happens but again it's never in my experience something that's happened with upper belts because by then those guys get weeded out yeah yeah but i'm very happy because the world is changing so now we can see like professor fabiana doing a really good job yeah. uh professor marcinha in georgia she's helping uh professor fabio uh and she's doing an amazing job uh, we have like big names, Professor Ana Laura, oh, and yeah. <laughs> right, Professor Jessica Flowers. Yeah. So now we have big names of Jiu Jitsu doing like very good job, and then I I think this can encourage more and more and more girls uh, to join Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I'm really happy for that. Really happy. Absolutely, because I especially love it uh, when we had, uh, you know, the Empower Women, when we actually had the women's self-defense, and they had one here in the Arizona Valley, and man, there must have been close to 50 women on the mats, and like, that's so cool, because I mean, I have yeah. a daughter, and I want her, I mean, she's already been training, she has no choice if she wants to train, <laughs> she's been training, um, cool. that's what I want, you know, for her to have Empower, to have that confidence, and no matter if you're a male or female, there's always going to be buttheads out there who are going to say something you have to deal with it it's so funny because i used to teach you for kids here mm. so during the kids class you never see something like that no. never never so i never saw i have been teaching kids about five years mm. i never see uh, one boy look for a girl and um i'm not raw with you uh yeah. you're not strong enough uh, so I never see it. They just uh, roll and play and do jujitsu uh, <laughs> with everybody. And sometimes I stop to think about it. Um, okay, so when uh, they just turn, you know, <laughs> the button <laughs> and you start to think, oh, the girls are not good enough. So it's hard. It's hard to understand. Um, when, they, when I started jiu-jitsu, uh, I was like, man, 
why when boy just walk in school and everybody, oh, okay, join us, let's go. Oh, okay, let's do jujitsu. Hey, come on, come on, let's do some sparring time. And when a girl uh, walk in jujitsu, everybody was like, okay, do you wanna do buffet? Do you wanna do some exercises? So it's, it's still hard for me to understand. Now uh, I'm feeling better because I understand that, okay, it's the word. So we have to be like a different approach. Yeah. But my wish, my wish, <laughs> it's one day uh, everybody can be treated uh, equal, you know? So yeah. it doesn't matter if a boy, if a girl, everything, everybody that walk into the school, okay, this is Jiu Jitsu school, we have Baha Fit, we have uh, Jiu Jitsu, uh, our program is amazing, and that's it. Uh, is it still hard for me to explain for a girl that, oh, that's a nice environment, you don't get hurt, uh, we will take care with you. And then when the boy, okay, well, we have sparring time, we're going to be amazing. <laughs> it's still hard for me. Yeah. But I think it's a long, a long way, a long path, but we are doing a good job. Gracie Baja uh, is doing a really good job with that. Um, they are like empowering women in an amazing way, amazing Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Now, another question is too, obviously the women who, you know, who stuck it out through the GB1, now they're getting to that point on their third stripe on their white belt to go to GB2. And on that right there is another, <laughs> and it's not just for women, it's for guys too. You know, they're like, oh, okay, now I'm going to the advance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you tell your male and female students when they start going to the GB2? Yeah, it's another another level <laughs> another <Yeah>. battle <laughs> so it's yeah again um i have a, like um um i used to say man uh you are like you are ready for the next level i i really believe in you i i, I won't give you a one more strap if you're not ready so you can do that and even like this time uh like to move to GB2, uh, I stop like with different approaches. So for me, I really believe that the girl, like female, a student, they just need a little bit more attention when they started. Okay. But since they understand the Jiu Jitsu philosophy, I like to be equal with everybody. Okay. So even for even female or male, when they are moving for GB2 classes, I were like, man, I'm so proud of you. You really can do it. It's so nice. The only difference we're going to learn uh, more details, a little bit more of talks, but we'll be exactly the same, the same class, the same professor, the same class. will be very nice. You're going to love it a lot. So uh, I like if you think about to challenge yourself a little bit more. You already know our GP1 program. You're doing very good. We believe that you can do a little bit more. So that's why we are recommending you to move to GB2 to classes. You're going to learn more details. You can improve your Jiu-Jitsu game. And then you can start to think uh, about different techniques. And then uh, since they know the program, which Baja program is really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. just love that. <laughs> so well, since they start to see and feel the program, they just fell in love. So let me ask you, let me talk to you about Baja Fit because uh, so I'm now, now I'm at Grace Baja Peoria and they, man, Baja Fit, I've never done Baja Fit and I've always saw Baja Fit. I would see all the women in there and I'm like, how hard could Baja Fit be? I see everybody laughing, having a great time. And the first time I did Baja Fit with Coach Lucas, I would end up leaving the class like I was a brand new baby born giraffe. My legs were like shaking. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I I rather do competition rounds. I rather do a comp training than Baja Fit. So, Man, I have a funny story about Baja Fit. Awesome. So when I started jujitsu, mm -hmm. I had like I told you, I was the only girl in my school. Okay. So I had to be tough, you know, I had to put like, um, I have to put a mask and okay, I am half a cyborg. <laughs> so <laughs> something like that to, to get respect, you know, yeah. I know I need, um, uh, I want that the boys, all the boys, even my professor look at me and see, oh, she's a tough girl. 
she she gave us a hard train uh i was i was trying to create you know like mm -hmm. uh this mask this 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 way to everybody see me so when i saw barra i was like that's a, a girl stuff that's a girl thing <laughs> i don't want to do that i like hard workout and then at that time i was doing like really hard workouts like lifting a lot of weight mm -hmm. i used to do squats with like oh 300 400 pounds and i was like uh doing like really hard workout and okay and that's it everybody that invited me to baja fit i was like no i like to hard workouts sorry i'm tough girl <laughs> <laughs> i used to say like that and then uh, I think Professor Vivi, she is doing an amazing job, amazing job. And when I did my first Barra Fit class, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I go with you because I, I go. And then on the end of the class, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I can breathe. <laughs> And then I was like, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's a hard training also. Oh, for sure. For so sure. So now, yeah. So now during this quarantine time, time mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing a lot of Baja Fit, a lot of Baja Fit. And every day I wake up like, oh, my leg, oh, my back, oh, my <laughs> arms, oh, my abs, <laughs> oh, Baja Fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the second time I did Baja Fit, I I told Coach Lucas I was like I need a time out. I just crawled, crawled and just like laid out. <laughs> yeah, so I really changed my my mind uh, about Baja Fit, mm -hmm. and I think this is a a movement that everybody is doing because I'm sure it wasn't just just me. Everybody when see Baja Fit for the first time was like, oh, okay, it's a kind of yeah. nice exercise <laughs> especially in brazil especially in brazil uh most of the guys look to baja fit like oh, okay 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 it's, it's for beginners for beginners is really good yeah. but today we are seeing like a lot of higher belts a lot of uh black belts using baja fit uh to get ready for a tournament and it really really works so I'm really happy. I really recommend Baja Fit for all my students. I'm really happy uh, that we have Baja Fit during this time because I'm inviting a lot of new students to do Baja Fit. So and then little by little, they are moving for Jiu Jitsu class. Yeah, because, you know, when I first got the, I guess, the idea of Baja Fit in my head, I didn't really think it actually transitioned into Jiu Jitsu. Then once I started doing the class, I'm like, wow. There's a lot of jujitsu movements that you do in here. And I'm, and for me, I mean, I can get your opinion on it, but for me, it complements a lot on jujitsu. A lot, a lot. So when I implement uh, Baja Fit here at my school, mm -hmm. uh, I had a, the idea, okay, so I'm going to mm -hmm. put the same time than kids class. And then uh, during kids do the class, the moms can do Baja Fit. So it will be like a very easy exercise. Let's start with moms and somebody that is looking for an easy workout, not so hard. But man, everybody just love it. Just love it. My, com my, my competition team, they start to do Baja Fit. No, no, let's put in another time, another time also. And then we can do the class and then uh, plus Baja Fit. I was like, well, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's just like... Uh, amazing program amazing program i have been using baja fit a lot a lot so you know with this whole quarantine and you know people who are staying at home you know and like a lot of our students are 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 still you know involved but not really you know involved with the classes you know how you know have you talked to some of the students to see you know what's going on and how to bring them back and if you do you know how do you get them back to actually try the classes and stay motivated so um even for me, uh, when the quarantine starts, I was like, man, because I just, I just love jujitsu. Is I spend my, my all day in my school, uh, so or I'm working or I'm training or teaching or whatever. So the first week I was like, man, and now what am I gonna do? Um, and I believe that was hard for everybody. So I have been talking with my, with my students. And then, so the first, the second day, I was like, 
oh man, what are gonna do? And but since I started doing like uh, a lot of meetings with Professor Flavio, with Professor Dave, with Professor, they are so amazing. They they gave us like um, just motivated us, and then we can motivate our students. And then I start to talk uh, to all my students, and all right, guys, don't stop, don't stop. We are a family. We're gonna get through this together. So let's keep training. Um, I used to send like a lot of messages for kids. Sometimes uh, I make like letters because supposed to be kids, they don't have phone or yeah. everything. So I made a lot of letters and then sent to them. Uh, okay, team, let's go. Let's keep working. Uh, if you don't have mats, no worries. We're going to do a class that don't need mats. You don't need a big space. You can just do uh, at your room or your living room. And even for my uh, adult students, I was like, hey, guys, let's do it. Let's do it. And well, it's funny because since we started like Zoom classes, I started to talk, hey, invite your wife, invite your girlfriend. You are living together. You, can, you guys can do it together. Yeah. And then my virtual classes are just uh, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we are doing like Baha Fit classes. And most of times, uh, when I start Baha Fit classes, my student uh, was not doing, but his wife was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was amazing. <laughs> I was like, for sure, let's do it. That's so, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think the secret is uh, keep smiling. Yeah. Keep smiling. If you, like, if you get like in a bad mood, uh, your students uh, can see that. So every time I really believe that you can come back stronger. I really believe it's not, not just because somebody's talking to me because Flavio talks to me, oh, okay, uh, we got to come back stronger. No, I really believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think quarantine, I think quarantine time um, has teaching us like uh, how to be stronger, mm -hmm. how to get out of comfort zone. And I, I, I can talk for me. Um, since I started jiu-jitsu, I prefer like pass guard. I like to play on top. Um, I don't feel like so comfortable uh, playing guard. During this quarantine, uh, I have been training guard. Okay. A lot of exercise with my belt, with the braulinho, <laughs> with <laughs> the dummy. Uh, I have been training only guard. Even when, I, when I'm training with Coach Mari, Okay, I start on bottom, guard, let's train in guard. And that's why I'm talking to my students. Let's improve your weakness. When you are at school, uh, sometimes it's hard, especially for female students, or uh, I don't let you talk about female and male, but like the smaller guys, mm -hmm. right? So it's hard when you have like class with a lot of big guys, it's hard for you. Uh, train some new technique or some technique that you're not so comfortable it's hard because that there, there is somebody like really bigger and stronger than you on top of you is meshing you so it's hard it's hard to try a, a different technique and now is the perfect time for that the Absolutely. perfect time so let's work on your weakness so for me it's guard so i have been uh trying the bearing bolo <laughs> <laughs> and, and techniques like that, that are techniques that are hard for me. So I think every time we can uh, think in a good way, we can find a good way to get through this. That's awesome. And, you, know, and you brought up some good things there. I want to talk about all of them. But uh, mm -hmm. one of the things is, you know, how do you feel right now with the kids being in quarantine? You know, how important it is for them, this training, for them to keep on training? Like, what's the biggest benefits they're getting from this? Mm, that's a good question. So about kids, my first week uh, was terrible, like for me, because I am Brazilian, so I'm a hugger. So every time <laughs> when, I, when I get in the school, I was like, oh, I miss you so bad. Oh, let's do the class. I really like this energy. Mm -hmm. So it was so hard uh, to teach the class uh, through a TV. Yeah. And was so cold, was so, all right, yeah, I can see it then, but uh, it's totally different, it's totally different. So I was 
I was feeling kind of lost. So, okay, let's do this, let's do that. But again, I was like, I have to find a good way. So I start to study a lot. I start to uh, searching and looking for uh, different solo drills, different games. So I was always invite the sisters and brothers hey join us join us yesterday was so funny because i had the whole family the mom the dad and two girls and the game time i did it they are doing the class and the game time i played coach says yeah. so i was like okay coach says and then i used to ask them okay so now charlie says and then the student goes saying something mm. and then when i saw that square i was like okay i'm gonna <laughs> trick them so the dad it's mike and i was like okay now mike says he look at me <laughs> you are doing the class you have to do game time <laughs> and then he just started to like very silly dance move <laughs> <laughs> and all the kids are doing together and then in the end of the class i was like guys it's about that it's about have a, a great time it's about having a good time, everybody together. So, of course, we can, we can teach Jiu-Jitsu. But it's hard for me, in my opinion, it's hard to teach uh, new techniques and new Jiu-Jitsu through the TV. I think Jiu-Jitsu is about the tails. It is a, a contact sport. It's yeah. hard to teach new techniques. But this is temporary. So during this time, we can... Um, you can do like a lot of things that are still jiu-jitsu when, uh, when you are drilling, you are still doing jiu-jitsu, but you can have a hard time. If you just stop, oh, I cannot do sparring. Oh, I cannot do specific training. Oh, that's not jiu-jitsu. No, no, it's still jiu-jitsu. When I'm preparing for my tournament, I used to do a lot of drills. I used to spend like two, three hours drilling by myself. So that's why I'm talking to them. And the, the very nice thing, because normally when I'm doing like um, my, my, my training for my tournaments, I used to like Instagram and Facebook. So I just talk to them. Remember when I'm trying to get ready for Pan Ams, when I do like the pass guard drill with a big ball, you guys saw it. I show it to you guys. So now it's the same thing. Let's yeah. do this. Let's everybody get ready because when everything come back to normal, I want to see you guys ready for the tournament. So I just keep talking to them. Um, if you try, you cannot lie. If you try, okay, you guys are having the big, the best jiu-jitsu class. No, I'm lying. That's not the best jiu-jitsu class. The best jiu-jitsu class is personally. Yeah. So I have to tell the truth. And, but we still ha can have a, a good time. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, I know it's not the best class. I miss you guys a lot. I want to hug you. I want to take you down. I want to train <laughs> with you. But for now, we can do like this very nice drill. So let's do this. I want to see who can. And then Mari used to help me in the kids class. So I used to say, I want to see who can beat Coach Mari. <laughs> Who can do more reps than Coach Mari? Let's go, guys. Let's go. <laughs> and then they just love it. That's and awesome. yeah, and then I think always telling them the truth because kids, they are very sensitive, mm -hmm. very sensitive. So if you start the class in a bad mood like this, okay, guys, let's do this. Man, they just feel it. Yeah. They just feel. So every time, sometimes I am, I, I'm having a hard day, you know, uh, you have kids. So sometimes we are worried about something. So sometimes I'm having a bad day, a hard day. But when I put my gear on, when I step on the mat, I was like, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. So a... <laughs> yeah, you have to, to pass this feeling for them, even through the TV. Yeah, it's... You know, um, I'm sure you've know Professor Victor up here in the valley, and uh, he gave me some great advice. And I've I've always loved kids. You know, I I my dad and myself with a wrestling in uh, junior high and high school. He was always there involved with us kids, 
And so I it rubbed off on me. So I like to be there, you know, with the kids, struggling around with them. And uh, man, it's just, you're right. The energy, no matter what day you have, as soon as you get on that mat, you have to act like it's the best day of your life because these kids love it. And it's yeah. so awesome. It's inspiring as well. Yeah, it is. I'm teaching from home. So I just uh, put the mats like downstairs. So now I'm calling home upstairs and work <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> oh my so when I, normally when we are at school, uh, when I have an intro class in kids class, uh, when I put the gear on, when I'm gonna try the uh, when I'm gonna try the belt, I used to say, okay, are you ready for superpowers? I'm about to give you superpowers. Are you ready? And then when I tie the belt, like, bah, superpowers. <laughs> and then I used to play with them like yeah. this. Now, uh, I use this for me. So every time when I'm going, like, downstairs, I put my gear on. I'm like, okay, half it's time to superpowers. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've actually done the same thing. You know, I've had some kids who, you know, for whatever reason, it came into school, you know, I'm not feeling them, you know, I'm feeling great. And I was like, man, I was like, do you know who Superman is? And they're like, yes. I'm like, you know when Superman rips off all his clothes and you see the S? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, same thing. I grab my kimono and I go like this. And I was like, you see the big Gracie Ba? I was like, man, we're <laughs> Superman. We're Superman. And oh, yeah. it's so awesome to have him, man. Uh oh. So there, oh. there you are. <laughs> yeah. I changed a little. So one of the things you also brought up too that I'm very curious to have about your mentality is that you said that bottom, you know, guard bottom was kind of like your... I can't I can hear you. Give me oh. one second. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. So one of the things you hit on that I think is very cool of you is that uh, you talked about, you know, guard bottom is not a very, you know, necessarily your best guard and you actually train now, you know, and a lot of people ego or whatever it is don't actually want to work on their weaknesses so what would be advice that you would give to you know a student of Gracie Bob they said hey you know what like I know I'm not great at this position you know what should I do should I work on it or should I not what would you say I think um I like to to teach like um by example you know mm -hmm. so uh sometimes it's hard for uh few professors they don't want to like say oh I'm not so good on that um, ah, my guard's not so good. I don't have any problem. So sometimes I say, okay, we train together, we roll together. You know that my guard's not the best guard of the world. So I'm trying to improve that. At the same time, I know that you take, your takedown is not the best takedown. So let's try a little bit. Let's, let's try to improve. Let's uh, get better together. So at the same time, I can train my guard and you can train your takedown. So let's do it. So uh, it's really hard. Um, we have been struggling with ego in jujitsu, even with white belts, with blue belts. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to talk to them, you know, uh, like case by case. Because sometimes um, we are wrong. Sometimes we are thinking that that guy don't want to train uh, for ego or something like that. But sometimes uh, he's having a hard time with another thing. So I, I like to ask them, okay, but what is your problem? Why you don't like online classes? I don't like either. I like to put my gear on and go to the school and spar like for two, two or three hours. I like that. It's hard for me to uh, do the same cardio online. And so tell me, tell me, what, what is hard? What's the hardest part of online classes for you? You don't like the way that... Uh, uh, professor is showing the technique it's hard to see okay i can change it let's change the angle you can help me with that yeah so i think when you give them voice uh they start to feel okay oh nice i'm part of it mm -hmm. so uh it happened here uh, of course i had a couple of students that they just oh no i'm not feel comfortable uh with zoom classes and i don't want to do that and then I start to talk them little by little. Um, my school is a very nice area here. Yeah. Very like, yeah, have I've big houses, we have like uh, big apartments, big houses. But I have a couple of students that they don't have like big houses. Mm -hmm. 
they share the apartment, they share the house with somebody. And then when I talk to them, like personally, they are like, oh, I'm a little bit shy. And I don't want everybody seeing my room. I don't want everybody seeing where I live. Interesting. And then I was like, I was like, okay, turn your video off. Mm-hmm. Turn your video. But go to the class, take the class, do your class. I'm, for me, there's no problem. I don't mind. Turn off your video, but, but keep still there. Stay there and watch the class. Interesting. And that's it. So case okay. by case, I'm trying to bring them for the virtual classes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, one thing is that I, I have, I went to Gracie Ball Las Vegas, uh, or it's Gracie Ball Vegas Henderson, or is it just Gracie Ball Vegas, Las Vegas? Yeah, we call Henderson Las Vegas. Henderson Las Vegas. And it was yeah. about two years ago, I believe. Um, and I think I messaged you guys saying I was going to be in. And I think it was like something about somebody like, oh yeah, we'll have some other black belts here. And I walked in and oh my God, there was black belts everywhere and this is literally the week of master worlds like oh. years ago. and i'm Where's like that? oh my god and just there was maybe a i don't even think there's maybe a, any white belts there but it was just color belts and more black belts than anything i've ever seen in my life and i'm not sure if you remember this but man what what is that like if you you find out like hey we're gonna have this big old thing what what goes to your head and how do you deal with all that Man, it's like, for me, for me, the word masters is like the week of the year. You know, it's like the Oscar. <laughs> we wait for this week, the oh, entire year. We wait for this week. Uh, I just love it. I just, I just love my Gracie Baja family. Um, I was traveling a lot. Uh, so three years ago, when I left Brazil, um, I was living in Portugal, so I was traveling the Europe, and I went to Abu Dhabi to find the words over there, and I had the Grace Barra backpack. Okay. So sometimes, and I, I was by myself, so sometimes I just walking, uh, for example, in Italy. Wait, 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 wait! You, then, were walk, you were you were walking in Europe by yourself. Yes. Were you training jiu-jitsu at this time? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, okay, yes. okay, okay. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Okay. I was I was purple belt. Okay. And then somebody just just stopped me. Hey, are you Gracie Barra? I was like, uh, y- yes, I am. Just wearing all the clothes uh, and the backpack for no reason. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy just, oh, let's go to my place. Let's have a coffee. But I was like, oh no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. No. And then you can meet my wife, my kids. And you can spend some time with us. I was like, seriously? <laughs> Man, it's, it, it's so funny. It's so funny. I have a, a, a funniest history. When I got here in the United States, uh-huh. I was in San Diego okay. fighting, I think it was the Open. Yeah, some tournament in San Diego. Mm-hmm. And that time, I just got here. So I, I was saving a lot of money. Okay. Actually, I have no money. <laughs> so... <laughs> so <laughs> So um, I just went driving okay. and then I was going to sleep in the car because okay. I have no money to get a hotel. And I, I didn't know nobody that time, nobody. I just got here in the United States. God. And then I was, um, I was working at a tournament and competing. So I get there like 6 a.m. and it was 9 p.m. Oh. I was super, super, super tired yeah. with two gold medals but super tired. <laughs> and, and then Professor, Ale, uh, Professor Ogawa, I don't know okay. if you know him. And Professor Ale? He, yes, yes. It goes, Grace Baja San Diego. And then he came to me, oh, are you, are you okay? You need something? I was like, no, I'm good, thank you. Uh, I didn't know him. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, where is your hotel? And then I was like, um, it's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, you don't have a hotel, right? And I was like, hey, to be honest, I'm going to sleep in my car because uh, I'm saving money. And then he was like, you go to my place. And then I was like, okay, but I didn't know you. I didn't know nobody. And then when I got there, uh, his wife was waiting for me. And she was like, okay, so I set up uh, the couch for Professor Ogawa. And you're going to sleep with me in our bed. Oh my God. I was like, <laughs> I 
I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so uh, I used to, to tell the history for everybody, to everybody uh, feel and understand how is Grace Barra family. Oh my so, God. So I'm man. not sure if that's Gracie Barra or if that's Brazilians because I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I have a funny story myself. I was in California uh, for uh, 5-2 when they were still going for the five tournament. And my very first instructor for uh, that wasn't Gracie Ball uh, before I joined Gracie Ball was Josh Hinger or Hinger from Altos. Oh, sure. So uh-huh. that was my very first guy who I trained for years with. And I was in San Diego competing as a white belt for Gracie Ball. And uh, he messaged me. And we're in a – it was me and three other guys. And we're all in this hotel room. And uh, he messaged me, like, hey, are you going to the tournament? I said, yes. He's like, do you have an extra room? And I was like, no, like some of us have a bed. I was like, I got a bed. Some of us are on the floor. He's like, do you mind if I, can I share the bed with you? I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I wonder if that's more of a Brazilian thing you share. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. But man, it's, it's very nice. They just, uh, I never, I never uh, feel alone. Mm. Uh, doesn't matter uh, what part of the world I am uh every time that i see like a crazy baja sign uh i feel like okay i have a family right here yeah, exactly. and i was in, i was in abu dhabi i was in abu dhabi and that time there was just two professors Gracie baja professors man both of them they just um uh, uh, give me like a hard training like getting ready they never know me before that and they just okay you can do it you can do it uh, let's do, let's try some takedowns. Oh, I know that girl that you will fight. So she likes pulling guard. Let's train some passing guard. And so that's just amazing. So when you talk about word masters, it's just my time to give back to all my Gracie Baja family, you know? It was so, such man, training. I just try uh, to give them the best time here in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Uh, I, 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 I like to bring snacks to everybody and juices and Brazilian food and <laughs> everything that I can make it. It's just like World Masters is just my, my time to give back for all my Grace Baja family. So it it's was, just amazing. I love it. It was such an amazing experience. And again, thank you guys for hosting it so much. But I just remember I was, go- I was sparring with Brazilians. He barely spoke any English. Again, I don't really speak that much Portuguese. And afterwards, I was like, man, all the Brazilians are, are fine. Like, they're smiling, they're laughing. And I looked at another, me and him, we, for the big photo, two years ago, <laughs> giant photo, uh, I got sat next to another American. He looked at me, I looked at him, he's like, dude, I'm about to pass out. I'm like, we just got to make this photo. We just got to make this photo that we're done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's amazing. I think uh, my dream is have like a big, big, big house here in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And then everybody can stay with us, you know, <laughs> instead of get hotel, everybody can stay here. And then you can have like a big camp for everybody, Brazilian breakfast for everybody. <laughs> it's, it's really 100% so cool, like how the, our team is so, it doesn't matter if we never sparred together. It doesn't matter. As long as you were, as long as you're Gracie Bai, you know the values that we represent. You understand how we're expected to be. And it's just, it's so awesome. Like our, our camaraderie, yeah. I guess you would say, it's very, very special. It is. And this, this kind of experience I'm trying to bring for this quarantine time. Uh, I'm trying to tell my students, oh, when I was in San Diego, helping something like that, when I was in Italy, when I was in Abu Dhabi. And so that's our Gracie Baja family. We always stay together. Mm-hmm. Why not now? Now we have to be more and more and more together, more than ever. Absolutely. So I'm trying to bring like this kind of experience. And so okay. Everybody, everybody has hard times. Now everybody's having a hard time together. Exactly. <laughs> we have no choice. <laughs> so let's get together and let's get stronger. Absolutely. So we can bring all the Gracie Baja values, all the Gracie Baja philosophy. We can bring to current time times. Awesome. That's amazing. Well, coach, this is the part where I call the competition rounds. All right. So, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. It's just me going to ask you some questions right off the bat and just answer them right at the top of your head. All right. All right. Oh. 
So one of them you already answered, but we'll go through it. So what is your favorite submission? Uh, Ezekiel from the half guard. Oh my God, I hate that one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Shout out to Professor Danny who always catches me that in, in competition training. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm always safe. I feel like I'm always safe. Then Ah, oh, no. I, oh, <laughs> right. What's your worst uh, submission to be caught in? What's the worst number one submission you hate being caught in? Oh, I think the same. I hate when somebody <laughs> caught me in this <laughs> I just hate it. <laughs> All right. So then uh, next question would be, what's your favorite guard to work from? Uh, I really like spider guard. Okay. Interesting. I really like, I'm trying to improve like moves and sweeps from spider guard. Okay. And what's one of the guards you hate dealing with? Um... For me, it's kind of hard to understand, like, this new generation, like, rubber guard oh. and butterfly guard. It's, it's a little bit hard for me to understand. It's not, like, my kind of game. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to improve that. But See, it's still hard. Mine right now here in the, in the Valley with our armor project, it's the, the new school is the uh, lapel guards, or the squid guards. Yes. Where I'm like, oh, my God. I, oh. It's, it's yeah. For sure. All this new game is a little bit hard for me. Okay. And then last question, what is uh, Coach Hoffa's favorite cheat food? If you're going to have not eating healthy and you're going to go all out, what's your favorite cheat food? And I know you're in Vegas, so you have all, <laughs> everything, everything there. <laughs> but it's hard because my favorite is still a Brazilian food. It's <laughs> doce de leite. Have what you heard that? about it? No, what is that? Uh, it's like condensed milk. Okay. So we make... Uh, it's like, a, like, like a, it's like a brigadeiro. You know brigadeiro? No. No. Also. Okay. It's like a Brazilian dessert. You, you, should, you should message every, all the Brazilians here and like, you guys need to feed Tino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But brigadeiro with those delays is still my favorite food ever. Oh my God. Okay. But I'm trying good. I, I'm trying good in and out and it's still good. <laughs> It's also good. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you for the competition rounds. You did amazing on those ones. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Well, Coach, um, you know, before we end here, is there anything else you want to say before we leave? You know, anything to the matches for Gracie Boss students worldwide? Guys, I think um, I think I just told it. Um, uh, it's just like, let's stay together. We are a family. Um, Gracie Baja for me, it's more than my team. It's more than my job. It's like my family. So you guys have been supporting me uh, since I started Jiu-Jitsu. So I have so much to give back. And that was exactly what I'm trying to do right now, um, supporting my Grace Baja family. So I really believe we can get through this together. And when you come back, we'll be so much stronger because I have been uh, seeing a lot of professors, a lot of black belts, a lot of color belts, a lot of white belts is studying a lot of jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. a lot, of, uh, a lot of uh, ways to teach jiu-jitsu, a lot of ways to improve uh, drills and exercises. So everybody is studying a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you come back, there's no way. You're going to be so much stronger. So Absolutely. let's hold a little bit more, more two or three weeks. And then when this thing is gone we're gonna come back to the school so much stronger and so much motivated uh to do our best and we start the tournaments we start the competition team and everybody like like a really family that's awesome coach thank you so much man. and hopefully thank when you. this thing goes uh this thing goes away uh i'm already talking about vegas in august so that's like my thing once a year to go out there and hopefully this goes away so we can start training again Sure, 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 guys. I really hope you have World Master this year, but let's just, let's keep working on on get through this, and I think it will be amazing. Absolutely. Sorry, my English. I'm still learning. When no, you're I doing good. Stage, you're doing good. <laughs> man, I was so nervous when I got here. The next day, it was like three years ago. I didn't speak English, so <laughs> I learned it here. So I'm still studying. <laughs> you're doing good, coach. You're doing good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.